Let's talk to Lloyd Kaufman from Trauma Entertainment. Let's talk to Lloyd. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, <laughs> Lloyd Kaufman. Hi, Chris. How was hey, you? how you doing? Uh, Lloyd Kaufman, um, also known as, uh, to people who know him affectionately as Uncle Lloyd from Troma Entertainment, the creator of so many uh, amazing uh, independent film franchises, I would say. The Toxic Avenger being probably one of the most famous, Sergeant Kabuki Man, uh, and, and so many others. And Lloyd, I reached out to you for two reasons. One, I want to have you on the show. And look, at there's Toxie right there. He's here. He loves you, Chris. He loves <laughs> Film Thread. Is that is that one of the original masks? Of no, the it's a uh, publicity mask. Ah, there you go. The but are, are, are pieces. They're they're uh, uh, appliances. But I've seen. I think I've seen that one at like events like San Diego Comic Con and, and other. Yeah, things. we have. Uh, this is kind of our. Um, uh, it was made by a fan actually in Texas, uh, Matt uh, in Austin. Wow! A anybody can be toxic in in that mask. But that's a beautiful thing. Yeah, you create you create your own damn movie stars, right, Chris? Well, uh, I love your book, Make Your Own Damn Movie. It's a brilliant book. I recommend it to a lot of, uh, you know, filmmakers getting started. It's incredibly inspirational. It has really real world practical advice. So make your own damn movie, you know, in addition to enjoying all the trauma entertainment, get that book. Um, I, want to bring, I want to bring you on because one, it's the Halloween season, which is my favorite, favorite time of year. I mean, this is to me the best holiday, right? Like. Um, and it's a time I think we're reminded to watch a lot of great horror films. And I want to talk about um, some of the great horror films from Troma, but there was a something that happened recently. We did a story on Film Threat about the Troma channel getting banned from YouTube. What happened? I want to hear in your words what happened. Well, we woke up one morning, one of uh, Lily Hayes uh, Salzburg, uh, our eldest uh, daughter, noticed that the... Uh, <laughs> six or 700,000 subscribers, free trauma movie channel on YouTube was gone, uh, disappeared. And uh, we got a notice that the community standards, community standards. So, uh, um, and then uh, luckily uh, you, being a pathfinding uh, member of the fourth estate, immediately wrote up something about it. And, um, and then our fans uh, got uh, a, um, created a, a hashtag, free traumas, free channel. And um, first YouTube immediately, we tried to appeal and we got a, a, a bot, a, a, a robot thing back immediately uh, saying, no, uh, get lost. And then uh, two days later, I assume because of you and the fans, um, the, suddenly our, ch our channel was restored. Uh, so it's a, I've, I've made a documentary, Chris, called uh, uh, independent artists versus corrupt cartels, where I lay out how YouTube and uh, Prime Amazon are um, screwing with the independent uh, artists because we take eyeballs away from them. They don't uh, demonetize uh, CNN when the, with the body parts from uh, wars. They don't demonetize uh, Netflix's uh, uh, clips from... Uh, the uh, pedophilia uh, movie uh, cuties and right. you can see plenty of bestiality and people getting their heads chopped off and there's all sorts of stuff on youtube but for some reason a 47 year old trauma after our channel's been up for as long as youtube's been around uh, somehow our movies suddenly uh, become uh, against community standards uh, movies which op which the uh, museum of modern art have premiered Movies where the American Film Institute uh, and uh, the Cinémathèque Française and the Russian uh, St. Petersburg Film uh, Academy. I mean, I can go on and on and on talking about communities, not to mention the uh, 600,000 uh, subscribers to our free channel on YouTube. So well, I don't know what community they're talking about, except uh, the 
the uh, uh, oligopoly, the cartel, the uh, near monopoly of uh, the big guys don't want the public looking at uh, any kind of entertainment other than uh, what they uh, determine. Well, the, uh, something like uh, Iron Man Part 53, which is oh, nothing right. with it, but... I'm sure that's coming, Iron Man. Democracy, not democracy. Right. Well, it's, it's I, I've seen just as, you know, um, I have been in, in the business as long as you have, but I have noticed that the amount of money that independents are able to generate has, incre it's just decreased and decreased yeah. and decreased. I mean, I remember we had a company called Film Threat Video in the 90s. And I, I remember the size of the checks that we were sending to filmmakers from all over the world. It was amazing. And now, like, it's, you know, if you've got an indie film on Amazon, it's, it's, Pennies, you know nothing, what? Like. Nothing. Yeah, so, they're using us to subsidize their billions of dollars of, of new uh, what they call content. We prefer to call it art. Uh, my little documentary. It's only ten minutes for uh, independent artists versus uh, 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 corrupt cartels, and I lay it out. We've got a movie, uh, a typical movie on the Trauma Channel. Uh, it, it did a million uh, views. You know, one year a million or a little bit bit over and we got about a thousand bucks uh, the next year and <laughs> the same we did better with that same movie i think it's called vegas vegas something or other i can't remember we didn't make it it's a one we bought and uh the next year we got a dollar eight from so one year went from a thousand even though we had more viewers the next year uh went back down to a uh, went down to a thousand eight and then there's all sorts of other horseshit so uh thank you for um and paying attention and and uh putting out that article because that got our fans uh, active and uh, the fans saved us as they always do. Yeah. It's um, I, YouTube's a tricky game. I mean, frankly, I haven't figured it out. You know, we, we're not allowed to monetize our channel, our film thread channels, not monetized um, here, which is why if you're watching this on YouTube, you'll see we've got like little things running on the bottom that help support us. Right. So, you know, in fact, yeah, you can support, they, they you can support push you into like branding. I think Twitter does the right. same thing. Even if it's not branding, they stick you, you know, I say Toxie says uh, vote. <laughs> oh, that's branding. I mean, right, right. Old man says vote. Oh, that's uh, that goes all over the world. We're going to, you know, I, God damn it. So no, cruel world. Cruel it, it, world. Well, Luckily, Film Thread is here to lead us and to uh, help independent uh, thought and commerce. Well, and luckily Troma is here to entertain us. You've got um, you've got a new film that I have to admit I haven't seen, but just, it's one of those things where it's like Troma movies. When you see the poster, you're like, that's it, I'm sold. It's, sh is it Shakespeare Shitstorm? Well, actually it's hashtag Shakespeare Shitstorm. Hashtag, all right, okay. Part of the title. <laughs> Can you uh, tell us about that movie? Well, a hashtag Shakespeare Shitstorm is, is uh, inspired or based on uh, Shakespeare's uh, The Tempest, which is my favorite uh, uh, Shakespearean play. And uh, um, I'd be happy. I would have done it uh, back when we did Tromeo and Juliet, but I wanted to wait until I was old and could feel Prospero's uh, angst and his, uh, uh, his loss of power and uh, his uh, continuation with magic, uh, movies being magic, all that kind of stuff. So um, I think it's my best film, certainly my most personal and uh, very reflective, rather a little bit melancholy, but full of sex and violence and uh, all the uh, things that uh, Choma and I and our fans enjoy. Um, I'd be happy to send you a private link. Uh, we've got um, a few festivals playing it and uh, if COVID ever goes away, we'll uh, put it in uh, Lemley Cinemas and the New York one and you know, maybe we get a couple of hundred theaters, not not all at once, but one by one by one and blah, blah, blah. Well, it's interesting now with movie theaters are kind of off the table for, I think, at least the next 18 months. I feel like movie theaters, because mass vaccinations are not going to be in play until 2021. I don't think I don't think movie theaters are coming back. But what's I mean. We're indie film is always used to struggling, right? Like the odd, the deck is stacked against indie film, anyways. I think this is going to dramatically change the Hollywood model. I think Hollywood is going will be making smaller films. Um, I, I think it's actually going to be a, a boon to independence because um, it, it, 
independents are now going to provide an alternative, right? Like you're not going to have movies making a billion at the box office probably for the next five years. I just think that that's, that's just not going to happen because movie theaters are not going to be around. So in a way, this is an opportunity for independents to, to step up because that model's always been there, right? Like that, that sort of like, Hey, we're in movie theaters just to kind of advertise and, but it's mostly revenue from VOD and streaming. And I have to put you, you have, um, you can get your movies at trauma.com, right? You can just go to the trauma. Oh, best place. No, we have a streaming service, uh, Trauma <laughs> Now. Uh, you go to watch.trauma.com, and uh, the first month is free. We got about a thousand uh, movies, music videos, shorts, uh, uh, and comic books, and uh, a few uh, Traumet uh, photographs available. Uh, and it's a good deal. It's a month uh, for free, uh, uh, only four ninety nine a month. But um, we took down all the movies from uh, YouTube because um, we hate them now. Yeah, well, yeah, why? why? We, uh, but our fans at least have a month to uh, cruise Stroma now for free, and they can probably see an awful lot of stuff. And if they want to help us, uh, if they want to keep 47-year-old Troma and uh, old Uncle Lloydy uh, <laughs> alive, uh, uh, subs uh, the word of mouth is very good. Uh, we're getting uh, subscribers every week, and uh, it's a good system. But uh, it's our only source of revenue right now. Well, uh, for four ninety nine, I mean that's le that's less than the cost of one rental for, as you pointed out, thousands of movies. So yeah, right. like a first month free. So uh, there'll be a link in the description of this of this YouTube video if you're, if you're watching this on YouTube. If you're if you're listening, um, Troma now. Thanks. Thanks, Chris. But um, yeah, like uh, because it is the Halloween season and, and we were talking before um, we started recording, uh, you know, trauma films, I mean, you can categorize some of them in, as horror films, I guess. Maybe that's a simple way, but trauma movies to me have never just been about what the surface level elements are. I mean, you can see a poster for a film like, say, Poultry Geist, right? And it's not... It's not a horror film involving a fast food chain necessarily. I mean, that's part of it. Like, I feel like the trauma films that, and the reason trauma has continued and continues to be relevant is because the movies are not just about what the poster reveals. There are there are elements underneath the surface for all the all the trauma movies, at least from the Toxic Avenger to Poultry Geist. To I haven't seen uh, hashtag Shakespeare shitstorm yet, but I am assuming there's elements of, in that. Tromeo and Juliet for sure. There's there's always some you know, and it's not beat you over the head, right? Like happens in a lot of your Hollywood Oscar movies, right? Like there's a message, but it's sort of woven in in kind of a fun way, not in a sort of dogmatic you know, uh, mm -hmm. a pushing it on your way. Can you talk about that a little bit? Because I feel like that's been a thread that's run from the time I discovered trauma, like in the eighties. My uh, paternal grandmother, Grammy Kaufman was a, a, a very uh, left wing person. And uh, she uh, infused in me uh, a lot of her uh, uh, sort of counter, uh, counter mainstream views, uh, things when I was growing up like uh, Castro in Cuba, he's actually a, a hero. He has uh, thrown out the corrupt uh, dictators and the uh, the parasites uh, at the at the casinos and the hookers, and he's uh, he's giving everybody education and food. and And she was against the Vietnam War. Uh, and when I was in sixth grade, I remember coming to school and saying, "You know, I don't think the Vietnam War is such a good deal." And uh, so she was a big influence, and uh, and I, she used to send me uh, subscriptions to IF Stone Weekly, which was a uh, socialist journalist, uh, very entertaining, very good uh, weekly um, stuff like that. And uh, I believed it. I uh, and I to this day, I uh, I uh, pretty much all the movies I've made. Uh, number one is to be entertaining, and uh, and then uh, usually there are themes within that uh, I've become obsessed with. In the case of Poultry Guys, um, we had a McDonald's that moved in next to the Troma building, and they were very bad neighbors. And uh, Gabe Friedman, who was working for us as editor, who you have met at Troma oh, Day. I, I know Gabe. 
you were um, you were the moderator at uh, I think the second or third Troma dance. Thank you very much, which was in Park City, Utah, during Sundance. Uh, not too uh, the uh, Sundance people weren't so happy. Uh, and we still do that, by the way. We still have Troma dance in uh, New York City uh, now. It's moved back because it's sort of a, a serious film festival, but all free, still free. And uh, any rate, uh, we. Um, uh, what was I talking about? Gabe, Gabe Friedman. Yeah, Friedman uh, gave me the book. Uh, I would never have read it. Uh, Fast Food Nation. And uh, wow, wow. Uh, so based uh, on that and the fact that McDonald's was so nasty and we had rats the size of raccoons uh, weekending in our um, basement, uh, <laughs> I, I, I decided let's make uh, Poultry Guys, Night of the Chicken Dead, make it a kind of a, I always like musicals. I've always wanted to do a musical which Poultry Geist is not really, uh, it's not a classical musical like Oklahoma, but um, it's great. It's all about uh, the evils of the fast food industry, about the fact that we've exterminated uh, millions of uh, uh, what are called indigenous Americans or Native Americans. Uh, I call them Indians, of course, being uneducated, and uh, as you can see. Uh, and um, it's a great film. It's terrific. And a lot of people think uh, they only get, uh, you know, a lot of people only see the sex and violence, but uh, uh, you see the, uh, the, the, the underlying theme. Toxic Avenger was all about the environment long before uh, Al Gore uh, discovered uh, the internet or created the internet or whatever he did and stole the uh, Nobel Peace Prize from the deserving scientists who should have gotten it. Uh, uh, the, he never heard of the environment. I think I think the first time he heard about the environment is when he kissed his uh, big fat wife on national TV during the inauguration and everybody almost puked. Uh, that was the only environmental contamination he ever thought of. And he dumped her very soon. She was the one who wanted to uh, to tell us adults what kind of music we were supposed to listen to, right? She ah. the whole big censoring. Let's censor the music because the American people aren't smart enough to choose music for themselves. And uh, she didn't uh, succeed, of course, thanks to Frank Zappa and uh, Dee Snyder and John Denver, who went down to Washington and bravely uh, went against the, uh, the uh, McCarthyism of uh, the Gores. So anyway, all our movies, uh, the most <laughs> recent uh, hashtag Shakespeare shitstorm, two major themes, but lots of uh, smaller ones. One is that uh, for the whole uh, 50 years of my marriage to the commissioner, uh, every morning we wake up and there are commercials for, uh, for pills, uh, big farmers uh, brainwashing three generations that the pill is the answer to everything. You got a hangnail, take a pill. You got a pimple, take a pill. You got the uh, rickets, take eight pills. And uh, little children have been watching those commercials uh, while they eat their uh, Fruit Loops and become, uh, and become, uh, 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 <laughs> become fat. And um, we have a national problem, uh, both uh, uh, the uh, problem of addiction with the opioids, because once you, the doctors stop giving you the, uh, the little purple pill or whatever it is, then you go and get the opioids. And now we have a, uh, we have a, a generation of, uh, uh, we have three generations of uh, people who are obese and uh, your children or my grandchildren are gonna be paying for the, uh, Diabetes pills, uh, you know, diabetes, <laughs> more pills. <laughs> well, it's it's interesting, like, you know, I, with Toxic Avenger, I mean, I noticed. Well, hold it, wait a minute. The other, the other theme of uh, hashtag Shakespeare shitstorm, oh. which probably is the more uh, controversial, is the uh, snowflakes, the uh, these uh, social justice warriors who uh, make their bones by destroying uh, people online, uh, Twitter, right. bait, Twitter hate, uh, uh, I'm not going to name any names, but uh, we've all suffered. Uh, uh, I've been almost canceled uh, at least once. And luckily, James Gunn kind of helped me, and the fans uh, got me out of it. The fans went after these little shits. And, well, uh, yeah, I, 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 I do think it's it's just it, – I find that strange because, I you know, people have tried to cancel me or film threat or whatever. I mean, we're pretty – I mean, we have a – really diverse group of people who write for film threat and and by that i mean diverse in terms of opinion as well you know right like it's i think it's important to represent all sorts of views but yeah i don't i i don't mind like people saying hey like like for example i don't like country music but i'm not trying to shut country music down what's right. new that i've noticed is 
that people are trying to stop other people from doing things when it's just like, well, you can live and let live. And But what I've always loved about the trauma films is while there is an environmental thread through the Toxic Avengers movies, there's also, you know, uh, it's also just a super fun movie. It's a super, it's kind of a parody of a superhero movie. It also has that messaging, but the way that you weave in messaging is there will be blood, guts, um, comedy, nudity, all, all to me healthy ingredients, along with a little political messaging, but not so much that if you're not, you know, you can just enjoy the movie. It's entertaining first. I feel like there's one big box that's checked when you watch a trauma movie, and that is entertainment. There's other things that are there if you seek them out, but you don't even need to notice them because you'll you'll have a good time. Um, I'm just thinking of things like Sergeant Kabuki Man, among others. Uh, and also, I will say, I, I, I'm, I'm hoping through your website, you're still, I know you're still selling DVDs. You have some of the best DVD commentaries. One of my favorites was Citizen Toxie, when you just completely bullshit and lie and you're you're just off the top of your head riffing and you're saying like you know oh that's Brad Pitt in that scene and like I just I feel like you're doing the commentary like you think no one listens to them I listen to your DVD yeah. commentary and they're hysterical so I would recommend you know look sign up for the trauma now but also get those DVDs because the commentaries are hysterical you weave in like really good film advice and then you're just fucking with people in a way that like, are they paying attention? I'm just going to check if they're paying attention. <laughs> Good point. And uh, we have uh, full length documentaries, uh, for example, on uh, return to Newcomb high and return to return to Newcomb high, a two disc uh, Blu-ray. Oh no, they're each separate Blu-rays. I'm sorry. But the uh, documentary is called two girls, one duck. It's terrific. <laughs> it's worth a year of film school and poultry guys. The best one of those documentaries is uh, Poultry in Motion, Truth is Stranger Than Chicken. They're, these <laughs> documentaries, they're all on trauma now. Uh, and if you're a film student, uh, uh, watch them because 80,000 a year for film school, you can watch uh, four or five of our, uh, I think we have six feature length making of documentaries. And uh, I don't, I you know, that plus uh, film threat to book and, uh, you know, uh, a biography of Charlie Chaplin and some of the great filmmakers. Uh, uh, I think you got it. I don't know that you need film school. No, I, I agree. I think these days, really, if you're a voracious reader, I think the best education is experience life and travel and, and get just some life experience under your belt. And then additionally, just listen to DVD commentary and read your book, make your own damn movie. I do want to, because I have you on now, I do want to kind of corner you and ask you about the Suicide Squad. James Gunn, you were in Guardians of the Galaxy. I hear that you might be in the Suicide Squad. Is this... Well, if uh, Mr. Gunn uh, doesn't cut me out like he did with Seizure, and, and <laughs> he told me... No, no, not Seizure. That's Oliver Stone's movie. Uh, he wanted me to be in the put me in the trunk with Michael Caine, though, but I refused <laughs> to get in the car trunk. Uh, <laughs> no, Oliver Stone started with me. Uh, 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 no gun cut me out of, uh, of uh, uh, Slither. 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 Yeah. You can see, if you look real hard, you'll see me in the police station. But I did a great improv, and the crew and the actors all laughed hysterically. But it didn't really fit. So that uh, that was that. But uh, wait till you see me in uh, in assuming Mr. Gun keeps it in. And Fred Raskin, who is his editor, also started with Troma and was on uh, wow. on uh, Tromeo and Juliet. So hopefully Raskin uh, will make sure that, uh, you know, I stay in there. But I, I, I pledged uh, in, by signature, I wouldn't give any more uh, information on it. But I think it's one of my best uh, cameos, uh, let's put it that way. Well, I hope, uh, I, I know that James Gunn, I saw the panel he did on DC Fandom. It was really cool to see him talk about it. I, I, it sounds like a lot of characters are going to die. I hope, I hope you get, if you get off, I hope it's in a very interesting way. But don't <laughs> say it. Um, I want to get off for real. I'm ready to go. <laughs> we were wondering. COVID is. Uh, uh, I played. I, I taught. I learned this. I didn't learn it, but I took lessons in uh, third grade, sixth grade, and I found this thing. I haven't looked at it for sixty years. Wow. And, uh, <laughs> so I've been fooling around with it, but that's it. I'm totally depressed, miserable, except for movies. Yeah. And uh, reading and. Uh, 
reading and enjoying Film Threat. Uh, oh, well, thank you. Thank you. It's, I will say this uh, to add to your, you know, we were saying about um, film school. If you go to storyblocks.com slash film threat, they are the sponsor of the film threat podcast makes it possible for us to interview filmmakers and indie film legends like Lloyd Kaufman. Go to storyblocks.com slash film threat. There's a million plus uh, pieces so of again, story block. Storyblocks.com slash film threat. It's it's base, it's it's like a, a stock footage company, but they also have other tools like music and um, special effects tools. It's like if you're a filmmaker, it's indispensable to use uh, Storyblocks. We started using it and then I approached them like, hey, do you want to sponsor this podcast? So I want to make sure to get that in because I I try to yeah. I do try to weave in tips for for indie filmmakers and people starting out, and they're a great sponsor of ours. That's um, a great idea, and uh, we've got uh, you know about a thousand movies all uh, uh, we own uh, or control, and most of them are non-union. So uh, if they need explosions or uh, things like that, uh, we got a lot of them. Well, you might want to see like Storyblocks. You probably could license some of your footage to them. Yeah. They have like this, you know. It's sort oh, of a that sounds great. Sounds yeah. great. Congratulations. I will, I will pass along the contact info I have at Storyblocks. Cool. Sure. Lloyd Kaufman, um, it's Halloween, and uh, what are your top five trauma horror films that you should see that are on your Trauma Now platform? What What do you think are your top five? Well, if well, first of all, October is a Trauma Ween, Trauma Ween hashtag Trauma Ween at uh, Trauma Queens in New York, and the uh, the world famous Bel Air Diner, which has uh, installed a, a beautiful uh, drive in. Uh, cinema in their parking lot. Uh, They're going to be uh, uh, showing Troma movies all month of October, Troma Ween at the Bel Air Diner in Queens. Um, in terms of the movies that we have, um, as I say, our movies are more like a uh, Cuisinart, a mixture of genres. Right. Uh, so I suppose, I think the best one, honestly, um, uh, I, I wouldn't have picked it, but Eli Roth uh, says that Mother's Day is uh, which is my brother's movie, Charles Kaufman, is the best uh, of, of horror film he's seen. And I agree, it's beautifully written, it's perfectly, uh, it's, a, it's a masterpiece. It's just a, a rather, in its day, 1980, uh, you know, a little bit ahead of its time. But when it opened in New York, a full page ad in the New York Times, which is pretty amazing. Uh, that's how times have changed. Uh, so I would put Mother's Day way at the top. And uh, uh, my brother, by the way, had, if you're in San Diego, he has a, uh, a bakery and a, ba a bread factory that manufactures high-end uh, bread, French bread, olive loaf, uh, rye bread, and the best uh, choc raw chocolate chip cookie doughs. Uh, he has a cafe in, uh, in, in, uh, um, in, uh, in uh, San Diego on University Avenue. Uh, stop in because also, he keeps the negative to Jakarta, a movie we made together that he wrote and directed, um, shot in Indonesia. It's terrific. Uh, he keeps the negative in with the, uh, the the cookie dough. So if you uh, go in there and order, uh, give me an olive loaf with uh, uh, six inches of uh, Jakarta on the side, uh, you'll get a kick out of it. And you've got about 400 people working there. Mother's Day is going to be shown at the uh, Bel Air uh, Diner on uh, October, I think. I, I'm not sure what day it is, but uh, I think it's the 8th. And it'll be shown with Troma's Father's Day, which is uh, a, a wonderful film. But uh, I would say Mother's Day first, uh, Death by Temptation. I don't know if we're showing it, but it's Samuel Jackson's first movie. Again, I didn't direct it, but we financed it. Um, uh, I think those two are terrific. Toxic Avenger, you know, was, the, I guess, an obvious one. Uh, again, it's not scary. It's more shocking and, uh, you know, it, it stretches you in different directions. Of the, as a side, as a footnote, of the Toxic Avengers, uh, I would prefer Citizen Toxie. I think that's the very, very best. I agree. And, uh, our friend, uh, cousin Ma Macon Blair, has written a big budget Toxic Avenger, a reimagining of Toxic Avenger which is, uh, I think the script is much better than the original Toxic Avenger. Legendary is uh, hopefully producing it. Right now they're uh, on hiatus with a, a, um, a, uh, a force majeure uh, situation because of COVID. So they, they, uh, they've sort of put it, they're not really 
doing much until COVID's over. But right. hopefully they'll uh, make a beautiful uh, Macon Blair directed uh, a big, big, big budget Toxic Avenger and uh, Uncle Lloydy will have plenty of cat tranquilizers and make him happy in his old age. Uh, I also think that, um, again, I, these are only my own opinions, but um, I would say Sergeant Kabuki Man NYPD is probably our most, uh, and tell me what you think, Chris, but I think it's our most accessible. It's got the least amount of um, graphic uh, sex and violence uh, and relies more on uh, the um, comparison. Uh, well, I don't know. It's... Uh, it, it's got women's rights in it where uh, Lotus beats the crap out of uh, Kabuki Man before he becomes Kabuki Man. It's got, it's got a lot of interesting themes in it, especially the uh, fact that in its day, uh, Japan was buying a lot of American assets and there was a, a, a great hostility in this country to Japan. Even in Congress, a congressman said that when, when uh, Japan bought uh, Rockefeller Center. One of the congressmen said, uh, "This is uh, this is uh, 19. This is the Pearl Harbor all over again." So that got me thinking, and that's kind of where Kabuki Man originated. Even though we had a Kabuki Boy in uh, Toxic Avenger Part Two. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, how many was that? Four, I hope. Yeah, we got we got Mother's Day, Father's Day. Toxic Avenger, Citizen Toxie, Sergeant Kabuki Man. One more. I would say I, I, Poultry Geist is probably one of my favorite. More yeah. uh, recently. Uh, you know, I, uh, recently um, reviewers have uh, said that Poultry Geist, I've seen more reviewers saying Poultry Geist is their favorite. But yeah. what happens is very often the reviewers will say, you know, Poultry Geist is a very good movie, but it didn't come close to uh, uh, Terra Firma or or right. I'm close to class of Newcomb High, you know, but, but it's good trauma. Anyone who's trauma, yeah, they, they always say that. Like, and although recently with, I think hashtag Shakespeare Shitstorm is a, 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 a bigger, a better looking production. And uh, I think it will emerge as, as uh, what is considered my best, even though, again, we're, we combine all the genres in each of our movies, uh, at least the ones from Toxic Avenger on. Right, but it's almost oh, like these were more slapstick, uh, raunchy like Porky's. We got ahead of por we came out ahead of Porky's, and uh, so we did very well with Squeeze Play, Stuck on You, uh, mm -hmm. uh, First Turn On, Waitress, and uh, we're making the uh, Blu-rays now for for them. And wow. they're, they're wonderful movies from the '70s and early '80s. Uh, they're they're great. They did very well until the major studios started to do the same thing like porkies right so we well, to do something I would, yeah I, I i mean there are just so many good ones uh, uh you know i would add tromeo and juliet to that also but when you've got a thousand movies on your platform i mean it's hard to pick five but it's what i've always loved it's like you're right it's not we were talking before about horror it's like yeah there are horror elements in some trauma films but trauma films are kind of like in a way, this is why I think you've used the word trauma in so many of the movies. It's just like, or they happen in Tromaville. Trauma is like a thing, like, you know, like Marvel has even said, I've heard Ke Kevin Feige speak about, like they don't really make super superhero movies They that they include all the entertaining elements of a movie, you know, comedy, horror, drama, you know, action. It's, it's like, and that's the thing, you know, I'm just realizing this now as I'm talking to you, like trauma movies have all those elements, especially I think the Toxic Avenger was kind of the first one that like landed at least from, I was in high school when I saw it and just loved it because it was funny and tragic and weird is about a nerd that becomes a superhero and and gets a hot girlfriend and it was so it had all that stuff going on but it's also got like this you know messaging in it but not in a way that's you know hit you over the head like trauma movies kind of like they check all these boxes of basically one giant box which is fun and entertainment so apps well, uh, that's the uh, formula we uh, we enjoy, and <laughs> even even uh, movies uh, like Night Beast, which we didn't make, but it it, it was made by Don Dohler in the uh, good old days in the eighties. Right. But uh, we're putting it out on Blu-ray. Uh, he uh, he deals with rape in a time when uh, you know, and he deals intelligently with it within a movie for which J.J. Uh, Abrams wrote the music, and uh, it's got some minor stars in it. But it's a good movie, and it's got some. 
thought-provoking uh, stuff in it. Uh, terra firma uh, reminds me is one of our better ones. Uh, we've got a theme in there about the self-affirming rape, which was a satire of uh, NPR trying to uh, uh, teach us uh, adults uh, what to do. You know, like, like, like we don't know what to do. Wait, uh, J.J. Abrams wrote the music for, for that movie? What's that? John Do J. J. Abrams wrote the music for that one movie? The, the Night, Don Night Beast. Movie? Yes, yes, he did. Night Beast. Oh, wow. And if you look at Lost, uh, uh, many people think that Lost uh, was very much inspired by Troma's War uh, because of the, wow. uh, the set mise-en-scene. Troma's War is a great one. Joe Bob yeah. Wrote, uh, yeah. had a big deal with it on uh, his show, uh, Drive-In, Last Drive-In. It's great. Yeah. I, I, I recommend that one too. Uh, Lloyd Kaufman, I want to thank you for being on the Film Threat Podcast. Uh, you're a legend. You're a hero of mine. And I love uh, that you still talk to me. And so I can't, I can't wait to see also, and I want to thank our sponsor, Storyblocks. Go to storyblocks.com slash film threat. I know we talked about it earlier, but Lloyd, uh, I can't wait till this uh, lockdown is over. I can't wait till there's a vaccine and we can walk amongst each other. And I'm yeah. looking forward to seeing you at a convention, hopefully San Diego in 2021. Um, I'm just fingers crossed. We'll be there. And, and, and uh, I just, I love you, uncle Lloyd. Just thank you for being on the film threat podcast. Well, thank you, Chris. You are the son. I never had it, but also <laughs> always wanted. And uh, hey, I can uh, perhaps pl uh, I'll play you off with the uh, play me off. See if I, uh, you can recognize what the song is. Okay. I can't. I, I'm a very old song, uh, uh, you know, kind of Sinatra, uh, Nelson Riddle, uh, although that was more like Nelson Biddle. Uh, <laughs> Birth of the Blues. Birth of the Blues. Birth of the Blues. Oh, and, uh, okay. Well, we have the blues in 2020 with everything that's going on. Oh, my God. The debates, the fires, the, the guy in the White House who allegedly raised people. The, oh, my God. Oh my God. <laughs> what a crazy period. Forced hysterectomies on the immigrants. Uh, uh, it's not a trauma movie. It's real. I know. So, yeah. say, like 2020 is a is a trauma. <laughs> just becomes stuff that's so ridiculous. You just like you know murder hornets and just like what is this? What is this year become? It's crazy. Uh, it, it's a watershed year. But uh, we've uh, tr if you go to my Instagram at Lloyd Kaufman and uh, my Twitter, uh, we've produced some uh, PSAs to uh, get you voting. We think uh, this election could be very very close. And your fans, uh, my fans, independent underground artists, uh, underdogs, you know, 100 votes, 1,000 votes could make the difference. So my right. daughter said I should make some PSAs to get people to vote. And uh, please check them out and please, uh, uh, you know, retweet them or share them or whatever. There, uh, One is trauma style with a beautiful traumat, and the other one is with a little baby, a little three-year-old baby. Cool. Well, Lloyd, uh, thank you so much for talking to us on the Film Trip Podcast. You're the best, Chris. Thank you. Thank you. See you. I hope I